Greetings, I'm Rose. Welcome to my sewing cave. And we have subscribers now. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to any new viewers. Today will be a little bit different. It's the first video of the video series I'm calling Vintage Investigations. So if you're one of those people that pauses movies or zooms in on Instagram photos just to figure out where the seam line is, this video series is for you. I have borrowed a friend's 1970s vintage gunny sacks dress. So this dress style was the inspiration for the dress I'm wearing today. There are multiple sundress styles that gunny sacks made in the 1970s, some with this contrasting bodice, some with this detailing of the corset front, and others where it is just a solid bodice with a multi-tiered skirt. In this series, I will be zooming in on all of those delicious details. I will show you the different fabrics, trims, and construction techniques that I think were used to create this dress. So let's start with the straps and work our way down. So the finished measurement of the straps are 7 eighths. That's a little bit narrower than I expected. And then we have lace. The lace is 3 inches, 3 eighths of an inch wide. The lace has been top stitched onto the strap before inserting in the bodice and facing seam. Okay, so the strap, it is a tube. It is not two pieces sewn together. It is a tube. There's no seam on this side. There's no interfacing or anything strengthening the strap. Completed length of the strap is six and five eighths times two. So 13 and a fourth length. So the gunny sack dress has a facing. So that's what I used in my second version and I fully lined my first version. Our facing is two inches complete plus seam allowance. And the underside of the facing was just surged. Oh, there we go. And the facing is interfaced. Um, that looks to be about an inch and a half. So it's a half inch shorter than the facing. Three stitches here on the top of this facing. It's difficult to see. One, two, three. And let's look at the front and see what it is. Okay, so two of those stitches are from top stitching the ribbon on. And the ribbon was not inserted into the seam. So most likely the lace was top stitched followed by the ribbon. And I think as sewists, we hold ourselves to a really high perfection standard. And you can see right here, we've got a little bit of a difference in the exposed lace here. So even this gunny sacks made from the factory is not perfect. Let's check the distance of these stitches. So we have a fourth of an inch between these two lines of top stitching on the ribbon. And the ribbon has kind of a sparkle sheen to it. So this is probably a rayon. Let's look at the label real quick. Yeah, ribbon is 100% rayon. The trim, so that's the laces, are 100% nylon. The lining is 100% acetate. And the wall, well this is surprises me, is 65% poly, 35% cotton. So that's probably why maybe it's a little bit sheer, a little bit lightweight. It's got a different texture than the cotton wall I have in my stash. So let's look at this sweetheart. We have a, yeah, we have a center front seam. So this is very similar to the pattern I hacked into my summer dress version. Instead of having the corset base closure on the version I made, it's just connected on the seam and we do not have these exposed facings. So let's measure the length of this front. Now the ribbon is actually enclosing the seam. So that ribbon is stitched onto the waistband. So if I wanna know the difference, I need to measure on the top and the bottom. 
and nope, it is top stitched on top. So I can measure from here to here, five and a half inches from the top of the facing to the point where it meets the waistline. We have ribbon or lace. We have lace that is an inch and three eighths wide, inch and a quarter, inch and three eighths. And what's really interesting, and I wouldn't have noticed this, is that this looks like the lace that you could feed through ribbon. You see how we've got these holes here? I mean, and this lace, this lace detailing is not the same as the lace detailing that is inserted into this facing. We look at this point detailing. They didn't do, um, you know, like a modified miter. They just pinched and sewed over it. So when you're stitching on top, it's just top stitching. It doesn't have to be perfect. So we have metal shank buttons and the buttons are a plastic pearl. You can see some of the pearl has worn away from use, which doesn't surprise me. And we have one, two, three, four, five shank buttons down the front. And I will measure from the center seam to the edge of this ribbon. And this is five eighths. So we have five eighths of an inch from the center seam to where the first ribbon is top stitched in place. You can see that it's just top stitched and it looks like the bodice, which I just noticed, the bodice has been reinforced. So the bodice was underlined by the lining fabric because the, um, the voile is so sheer. So that they did is they just um, added the lining to the voile and treated it as one. And then they just top stitched the ribbon on top. I had considered using a double needle when I was sewing on my trim, but a double needle would leave zigzags behind. So we still have the, the 3 8 ribbon. So we have 5 8 plus 3 8 So this is one inch from the center seam. And then we have 5 8 from the first ribbon to the second ribbon. And the second ribbon, they have inserted the lace underneath the ribbon. And I had just abutted my lace to my ribbon. But this one is actually underneath and It looks like they inserted the ribbon as they were sewing. There isn't an additional layer of stitching here. So you could do this, you would just have to be, you know, slow. And again, don't hold yourself to some high, um, high standards. You can see that the width here is more than the width here. So they weren't precise either when they were sewing this. So we have a princess seam here. You can see where they've eased the fabric in here to make room for the bust. And so the full width from the center seam to the base of the princess seam is three and three eighths from the base of this princess seam to the side is three and a half. The waistband is two inches plus seam allowance. This ribbon was top stitched after the skirt was attached. So that's quite a bit of bulk because we have all of these gathers. And the waistband is underlined by the lining. Doesn't appear to be interfaced. I don't feel any interfacing in there. We have the tie attached where the waistband is. And you can see here the waistband does not continue in the back. It is just a solid piece. So the tie is a tube. It is not two separate pieces. So this would be an inch and a half plus seam allowance. And the waist tie is not interfaced. And the waist tie is 36 and a half inches long. That's longer than I anticipated. And we have two, one for each side. So let's look at the back. Let's measure the waistband before I get too far ahead. 
So we're looking about a 24 to 25 inch waist. So we can see that some of these stitches are starting to pull away. That's just from use. Let's look on the underside. How was the bodice and the skirt attached? Yeah, it looks just like it was stitched and then surged. So here's our label. This is a size five. Hand wash separately, cool water, mach not machine wash. Pretty much just, I would probably lay flat to dry. I wouldn't want the weight of the dress being supported by these straps. And the facing was surged. You can see the buttons were attached after the facing was attached. Looks like the front seam was surged. Yeah, the lace was not inserted like we had seen before. And so it looks like the lace was top stitched and then the ribbon was top stitched. And we have a lapped zipper. Let's measure the length of the zipper. About 15 and a half. So this skirt appears to be an A-line that was gathered. So we have the a loose lining, so it is not underlined because it wasn't attached all the way through. It's separate. And both were gathered into the bodice seam. Okay, so we have three panels in the front. We have one, two, three panels in the back. Okay, first here of the skirt is 20, 28 and a half inches long from the waistline to the seam line of the first tier. And the lining is just one skirt. There is no under tiers. So let's measure that. 38 inches long. And the bottom hem of the lining is just surged. And yet we've got acetate because it's got those subtle ridges and it almost makes it sound like taffeta. I don't know if you can hear this. So I'm going to measure the width of this base of the first tier. So I'm going to start with the front. So we have 17 and a half. Okay, it looks like every tier is 17 and a half inches wide at the base. So 17 and a half times six. The base of this tier is 105 inches. So that was actually more than I had anticipated. Yeah, the ribbon and lace was top stitched on after this tier was attached. So our lace is, our lace is two inches wide from top to bottom of the scallop, and our scallop is an inch and three quarters wide, and we're using the same ribbon, which is three eighths, and we just have two rows of top stitching. We have a baby hem on the bottom ruffle, so we're gonna measure from the top of the ribbon down 12 inches. So we had, I believe, 26 on the first tier, plus 12 is 38. And I believe the lining, we had measured 36. There is a two inch difference between the base of this hem and the bottom of the lining hem. Oh, interesting. Okay, so um, on these, they didn't even finish the seams. They used the selvage as their seam finishing. Let's see, is that all the way around? On the bottom tier, it looks like they just have three panels, the width of the fabric. And let's measure. Yeah, we're at like 45, 45 and a half inch for first panel. Let's see if all panels are the same. Yeah, 45 an inch. Okay, so 45 and a half times three. So the bottom tier is 136.5 inches around the circumference is 136.5 inches around and that's interesting so when i sewed my version up i didn't want this lace to be flapping around 
And so I had just done some whip stitches here to hold it together. Um, but they just folded it over. Yeah, and they went just, they tried to match the scallop, so it's just a fold over, an overlap of that one and three quarters ish of the scallop. Let's turn this inside out and see if we can learn anything else. So here's the inside. We have the center front, the bodice seam, an underlining of the acetate lining and the waistband, and that the lining is just gathered here. I did not measure the bottom width of the lining. So let's do that. And I will put all of these dimensions and measurements in the description box. So if you want to just look at this later and know if your recreation kind of mirrors the style of gunny sacks, you can just go straight to the description box. Thirty-eight. So thirty-eight times two. So the base of the lining is seventy-six inches wide. So it looks like we have a line skirt gathered into the waistband. And this is a lot less gathered than the top layer. I mean, we do see some gathering. So there's a lot less fullness here. Um, you wouldn't want to go too narrow here because you do still need room for your hips, even though this is definitely um, a smaller size. Let's look at the zipper insertion. So we had the lap zipper. The it doesn't appear that these this um, seam was interfaced. We do have some pulling around the zipper, but that's not uncommon based on the age of this garment. So we have, yeah, it looks like they had attached the underlining here. And they had left the lining loose and extending a little bit more than the wall and that allows them to leave these layers floating free of one another so the top skirt can have that extra gather. We do not have a hook and eye at the top and the label was surged on the bottom of the facing and then flipped over and likely top stitched, but this that probably came out based on what I'm seeing here. So I think that based on the measurements I have, we could really use that seraphin pattern from Lakala and mimic a lot of these details. Yeah, this dress was a lot simpler than I had thought. I mean, I have looked at pictures online, but it's one thing to actually see it in person. Um, it's not perfect, and it's a metal zipper. But this is, yeah, I'm definitely easy to recreate. Oh, look. And then you can see, I didn't even notice this, the bottom ribbon isn't even attached in the seam line. They just folded it back and top stitched it down and only the top is included in the seam line. Probably because there's a lot of bulk here because it's the base of the tie and where all of these seams connect. Let's see, is the other side like that? Yeah, the other side's like that too. How interesting. So they knew that they would have some bulk issues. The takeaways here, a little surprised that it's not as precise as I thought. I think I have just hold gunny sack dresses to this high standard um, because I'll never be able to fit into one. The poly cotton wall was a surprise. The tiers, there being six tiers in the skirt was a surprise. Yeah, it's a beautiful dress. I love this fabric. I have some wall coming in the mail, um, but it's 100% cotton. So let me actually, I think I have some plain wall in my stash and we'll see if we can do kind of a texture comparison of those two. So in looking at the cotton, 100% cotton wall and the poly cotton wall, the poly has kind of a little bit more of an abrasive texture. Cotton is, is a little bit softer. And I feel like there is um, a subtle 
shine almost. There's just a little bit of it. The poly cotton reflects the light just a little bit differently than the 100% cotton. After looking at this dress closer, I think it is very easy to recreate this dress. You can follow the tutorial I already have, um, but I didn't have this sample when I made up that version. So there are definitely things I would do differently. I would put the lace underneath the ribbon and then top stitch the ribbon. My version, I have it abutted. Um, the second version I used facings. I think I would use facings going forward. I use quilting cotton in my versions because I had difficulty finding fabric that matched the look I was going for and I also wanted to use up what was in the stash. So I do have some voile coming. Um, and this type of lace was surprising. I didn't expect to see this kind of lace where we've got those holes. But yeah, it's a beautiful dress. I cannot wait to make another version. This one is going to go back um, to my friend. She let me borrow it so I could film this for you all. But if you have any questions or things that you would want me to call out in future videos, let me know. I bet you didn't think I could talk about a dress for 20 minutes, right? <laughs> Well, if you enjoyed my vintage investigation, you came to the right place. I have a couple more vintage garments that I'd like to use in future vintage investigation. If there are different clothing types or different techniques that you'd like me to highlight in future videos, please let me know in the comments. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for watching.